Yo, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be going over the missing piece to Errol that I didn't discuss in any of my previous guides. And before anybody says it, I know my last Errol video was supposed to be the final Errol video, but I'm pulling a little bit of a dream with this one. We're doing the grand, grand finale because I was actually coaching somebody this week and it made me realize there's one key detail that you need to know to master Errol. So today, I'm going to be sharing my final shortcut to hopefully take you from just being able to air roll sometimes to actually being able to continuously air roll consistently. Quickly, before we get started though, only a small percentage of you all watching right now are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you haven't subbed yet, I'd really appreciate it if you join the small group of people subbed to the channel. Anyways, let's go over the missing piece to learning air roll. All right, guys, like I said, I've made more than a few Errol videos, and so I'm going to do my best to not be repetitive here. That being said, I'm going to assume you've seen at least one of those other videos when I go about explaining this stuff. So if you haven't yet, definitely start with one of my other videos. But okay, if you're still here, I'm going to assume a few things. For one, you understand the basic adjustments. In other words, you know how to turn left and right using tornado spins, and you can execute these adjustments consistently. And before we get any farther, I want to make clear that when I say consistently, I really mean consistently. And I know this might sound annoying, but the only reason I'm stressing this so much is because I've noticed lately that a lot of people I coach have this exact problem. Truth is guys, if you can't do the individual adjustments, you're not going to be able to continuous air roll with any sort of reliability. Granted, you may be able to get through some workshop maps that are a little more straightforward, like level one or two of Leth's Rings while continuous spinning, but if you're somebody who does not have the individual adjustments down, the moment you hit a level where you have to make sharp turns, you're going to realize just how little control you have over air roll. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this just to tell you that you suck and you need to get good. No, I'm saying all of this so that you understand something. In the wise words of one of my fellow YouTubers, going around freestyle spinning until you one day miraculously realize the secret to air roll is about as smart of a plan as throwing a bunch of stones at a wall and expecting a castle to appear. Trust me guys, neither one is going to happen. Point is, take my word and iterate the process I went over in my previous guides until you understand one, the individual adjustments, two, where they start, and three, actually how to execute them in practice. But okay, now that you're caught up, we can really get into the reason I'm making this video. Long story short, one of my Patreon subs was asking me how I control my speed so well while air rolling because he said even when he gets those individual turns down he ends up speeding off and losing control of his car and the more i thought about this while we were talking the more i realized i didn't really do you all justice with my previous air roll guides yes i showed you how to turn left and right midair but i neglected putting a lot of time into that last step learning the continuous air roll piece not just the individual adjustments you see, the problem is when you shift from doing individual turns to continuous air rolling, normal methods of controlling your speed midair don't really work, right? Normally, if you're flying forwards too quickly, you can just pull back on your joystick and your car is going to tilt back and slow down too. But when you're air rolling, just pulling down on your joystick at any moment isn't going to cut it. The only thing that's going to do is spin your car out. So to set the scene, what we need to do to bridge the gap from being able to do the individual adjustments to actually being able to continuous air roll is we need to find an adjustment that's going to control our speed. In other words, we need an adjustment that will take us from a position where our nose is facing forward to where our nose is pointed vertically, is pointed up or even back. And spoiler alert, this is actually the easiest adjustment of any I've covered. So stick with me here as I try to explain what I'm talking about. To see what I'm saying, let's take a look at a basic tornado spin, but viewing from the side. You see, when we execute a basic tornado spin, it's clear that the point where our nose is facing the highest 
is halfway through that spin. Or in other words, 180 degrees out of the 360 that constitute one full rotation. So what this means is if we hold down tornado spin for one half of a revolution, and then we let go of our joystick to let air roll complete the spin to make our wheels face down again, the car is going to end in a position where it's pointing directly up rather than facing forward. In other words, a well-timed tornado spin is actually going to tilt our car back. It's going to do what tilting our car back does without air roll. And believe it or not, this simple trick is exactly what I use to control my car when I'm doing complicated aerial mechanics like air dribbles or double taps. Because you see, what I'll refer to as this swooping action that comes from this tornado spin allows you to slide under the ball and control it very well midair. But before I get you too excited, what I want you to do to learn this is just start with the basics and head into free play. So to begin, Practice jumping off the ground, just slightly tilting your nose back, and really focus on getting the timing down of that tornado spin to get the maximum, for lack of a better word, swoop possible. If you find your swoop is lifting your car, but your car ends up facing forwards again, you're tornado spinning too much. And in the same way, if you find your car does lift up a little bit, but only a slight amount, then you're not tornado spinning long enough. Either way, practice this drill until you can jump and then tornado spin your nose to fly nearly straight up into the ceiling. From here, you now know everything you need to know to piece together the continuous air roll. Now, obviously, it's going to be a big leap to go from individual adjustments to continuous air roll. But if you followed up until this point, you should be able to turn left, right, and control your speed while spinning midair. But remember guys, the key to getting this down once you start that continuous spin is to remember where the adjustment starts. And whether you're turning left, right, or trying to slow down, the good news is, is that with my method, the adjustment always starts in the same place, i.e. when you see the hood of your car. Now that being said, when it comes to this new adjustment that we're going to use to control our speed, you'd obviously be using this in a slightly different position than the others because your car is going to be facing forward when you start this one. But regardless, pay attention to when you can see the hood of your car while you're spinning and make sure you start whatever adjustment you're doing then. But there you have it guys, I've now divulged all my secrets when it comes to learning air roll. To recap, we've covered how to turn left how to turn right, and how to slow down using tornado spins. In essence, we can now move our car in each of the four directions midair. You know, left, right, forward, and backward, which, after all, is the real reason I call this last step the missing piece. From here, perfecting air roll just comes down to learning how to blend these inputs to move in any given direction. Right, at the end of the day, continuous air roll is useful because it unlocks complete control of your car, whereas without air roll, you're limited to only moving in a few directions. And to be honest guys, I'd be lying if I said the only things I use to turn are these three adjustments, because at the point that I'm at in my game, consciously learned how to turn my car using different combinations of these inputs, that way I don't have to wait until my car is always forward facing to start an adjustment. But until you've put hundreds of hours in and you're at this point as well, hopefully my shortcuts will help make learning this near impossible mechanic a little more bearable. So really guys, stick with it and trust the process when you're learning this mechanic. Nobody said it would be easy, but I promise that if you can be intentional with your training, whether that's in rings or even just free play, and you really do follow the structure I've laid out in these guides, you're gonna learn this mechanic in a fraction of the time it took me. Anyways guys, that's about going to wrap things up for this video. I know this may have been a little confusing, so definitely feel free to rewatch any parts of the video if you're still unclear on anything. Also, I'm doing a big push on my Instagram and TikTok this month, so if you haven't yet followed me over there, make sure to click the link in the description if you want to see more. As usual though, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like and consider subbing to help get this content out to more people. 
Anyways, I'll see you all in the next video. Later, guys.